Okay, we're in our last section, 1D, which is all about real-world rates. So this really isn't that different than what you've already been doing. We're just going to take it one little step further. Um, so let's take a look at these first two problems. So we've got on an airplane, there are two seats on the left side of each row and three seats on the right side. There are 90 seats on the right side. How many seats are there on the left side of the plane? So if you've ever seen a plane, right, sometimes there's three and three, but then on the smaller planes, sometimes there's three on one side and two on the other. So that's this kind of plane. But there's not actually only two seats on the left and three seats on the right. That's just the original rate that they're giving you. So that's what we want to start with is our left and right side because those are the two things we're comparing. So those, that's what we want to kind of orient ourselves with. And we're going to start with um, the original rate is what I like to call it, which is two seats on the left. And I put that on the top because my top is the left side. And then three seats on the right, which is on the bottom, representing the right side. But the numbers they actually give us that we're really truly working with, aside from this original rate, is that it says 90 seats on the right side. So I'm going to put that on the bottom on um, my other rate. And so these are equal to one another. We're going to use that original rate to help find our missing number. So this, once you set it up, this is basically like we did what we did in 1B, where we are finding the missing number using our relationships um, for our proportion proportions. So for this one, I'm going to look across because there's not a clear one up and down. So to get from 3 to 90, I'm multiplying by 30. So I need to do the same thing to the top and I get 60. And notice how I circled it. That kind of draws attention because if you just fill in your proportion, you're not really going to tell which part is the actual answer. So make sure you circle that or rewrite it, something like that. But there's going to be 60 seats on the left side using these um, rates proportionally. So let's try one more together. So now we've got a person on a moving sidewalk travels 21 feet in 7 seconds. The moving sidewalk has a length of 180 feet. How long will it take to move from one end of the sidewalk to the other? So the two things we're comparing, that's always what we want to start with, is feet in seconds. So I'm going to put feet over seconds. And then we're going to set up the original rate they give us, which is 21 feet in 7 seconds. Then the other number, they're always going to give you three out of the four numbers somehow, some way, and then you're trying to find that uh, missing number, which is that fourth number. So they give us 180 feet, so I'm going to put that on top, and I know that these are equal to one another, so i got to try and think, and there's a couple different ways I could do this, right? I could see a connection from 21 to 180, but that's a little harder to see. What I notice more is this up and down relationship of um, taking 21 divided by 3 to get 7. So I'm going to do the same thing over here and take 180 divided by 3. So I would think 18 divided by 3 is 6. So then put the 0 at the end because we're talking 180. So we get 60 seconds. That was just a quinky dink that we had 60 for both answers, by the way. But we got 60 seconds. You could also call that one minute if you want, but I'm going to keep it in seconds because that's what we started with. But one minute would work too. And notice how I circled it so we know that's the actual answer they were looking for. So now your job, unless you need to go back and take a closer look at something, your job is to do these next three problems on your own, showing all your work, and then change your color on the tracking page so that you can get it checked by a teacher. They will check it for you. This is your quick check is doing these three problems, showing your work, and gain a teacher to sign off on it. Good luck, and you're almost to that level one assessment. Ooh, you're so close. You got it.